I was asked the very generic question, what orbital are lone pairs in? And the short answer here is that they are in hybridized orbitals, but you don't know what the orbital is going to be called until you draw the Lewis structure, figure out the hybridization of the molecule, and then whatever the hybridization is, that's the type of orbital that the lone pair is going to be found in, okay? Here is water. That oxygen has four things around it, two sigma bonds and two lone pairs. In order to accommodate all four of those things in a tetrahedral-ish arrangement, you're going to have sp3 hybridization. sp3 hybrid orbitals are arranged tetrahedrally in space, and one of those is going to be to a hydrogen. Another one's going to be to another hydrogen. That's why water is a bent molecule. Then one of them is going to have a lone pair inside of it, and the other one's going to have a lone pair inside of it. The lone pairs are in the hybridized orbitals, not the unhybridized orbitals. <laughs> Let's do it for formaldehyde. The only lone pairs here are on the oxygen. This oxygen only has three things around it, a carbon, an ox, a lone pair, and a lone pair. Three things. Put another way, you have a sigma bond and two lone pairs and a pi bond. The pi bond needs an unhybridized orbital, so you can't hybridize together all three of the p's. Instead, you need sp2 hybridization. That's trigonal planar. So if I draw myself a trigonal planar arrangement here, one of these is a sigma bond. Well, this is the oxygen here. It's the oxygen that's sp2 hybridized. One of those hybrid orbitals gives you a sigma bond to the carbon. Another one holds a lone pair, and another one holds a lone pair. And then, if you're curious, the unhybridized p orbital helps make a pi bond with the c that is also sp2 hybridized. But you're not here for that. You're here for what orbital the lone pairs are in. They're in the hybrid orbitals. So if the oxygen is sp2 hybridized, it's in an sp2 orbital. You probably know where I'm going with this carbon monoxide. That carbon needs one single bond, room for one lone pair, that's two things, and then you have two pi bonds, but those are unhybridized p orbitals. The carbon and the oxygen each are sp hybridized, which occur in a linear arrangement. Oh look, it's a linear molecule. If I start with the carbon, I'm going to draw my sp orbitals, one of them holds a sigma bond to the oxygen. One of them holds the lone pair, because lone pairs are in the hybrid orbitals. And then there's two extra unhybridized p orbitals. There's one, and here's a second one in the third dimension, making the two pi bonds. Again, let's not overcomplicate the uh, sigma and pi bonding here. Let's just remember, the lone pairs are in hybridized orbitals when you have hybridization occurring in the atom or molecule. Well, each atom hybridizes in the molecule is what I mean. Thanks for bearing with me there and uh, best of luck.